Welcome back to my channel everyone. I'm Charles from Charles in Photography. So this is part two of the two-part series on how to stack landscape images. Now if you haven't watched part one before I'll put a link up here now and you can watch it. I was at Curtis Falls around a week ago in Mount Tambourine and I took a set of four stack images to give me nearly front to back focus on this scene. So this is the finished version of the stacked image and now I will show you in part two how I went about editing the photos in Adobe Lightroom and then stacking them in Adobe Photoshop. If you want to see my other video tutorial on how I stacked a set of macro images here's a link to this video now so if you're into macro and you want to see it take a look at it because it starts from when I take the photos of the cacti follows through all the way to the editing process and to the final image. Now I was using my Nikon D500 with the kit lens the 18 to 140 millimeter lens at 18 mils. So now let's jump straight into these photos that I took. So the settings were 18 mil f11 and the shutter speed because it was on aperture priority varied a bit. It was on ISO 100 and auto white balance. And before we start editing them, I'll show you where the focus point was in all of these images. In Adobe Lightroom, you can download this plugin and I'll put the plugin, if you want to see the focus point on your photos, I'll put a link in the description here where you can download this plugin. But if you've got the plugin installed, it's in the library. You've got to be in the library mode. It's in library and you go all the way down to the bottom here, plugin extras, and we click show focus point. This is my focus point for the first image and you can see here it has red and black square which means I was in live view and red and black equals locked AF point focus achieved also primary AF point because I was using single point focus. So this is the first point of focus. My second point of focus was this wet rock here about a third of the way into the image. My third point of focus was this area here, just this very large rock here, about two thirds of the way into the image. And my last focus point was the fern leaves. Because like I stated in the video, I want to keep the background slightly burned. So this is how I took the photos. Let's jump in, we'll go into the develop mode. We select the first image. So we start the editing by going down to the lens correction and I click on remove chromatic aberration and enable profile corrections there and it's detected the Nikon 18 to 140. Now I go up to the basic panel up the top here. I've already selected my camera profile to be camera landscape because this is what the picture profile states on the camera. I like this preset quite nicely. Now the white balance here it shows has shot. It was set to auto. I can click on daylight here if I want. I don't want it this warm. I'll just cool it down a little bit. That's it. I'll leave it like that for the time being. Now I'll increase the exposure slightly because it was slightly underexposed. So we've just increased the exposure a little bit. We'll add a bit of contrast. I'll start with the blacks. I'll hold the alt key down. I'll slide the, the slider to the left. That's it. I just want a clear white image there. I'll increase the shadows a little bit. There, that looks quite good. Now I'm going to bring the highlights down. And the reason I'm bringing the highlights down is just you can see the top of the rocks here are quite exposed. So I just want to tone them down so we see some detail in the tops of the rock. That's why I'm bringing the highlights down. I'll add some clarity. I'll add some texture. And I'll just add a little bit of dehaze. We'll come down here. We'll add a little bit of saturation. That looks really nice there. We'll add some vibrance. Now that's starting to look really nice. I'll just increase the exposure just a little bit more. Wow, that's starting to look really nice. So now we go down to the HS cell panel and we'll click on saturation. So I grab the adjuster up here, the little toggle. And you can see when I grab over here, I'm just going to place it over the tree ferns here. And if I slide it up, I'm increase the saturation. If I slide it down, I decrease it. So watch if I slide it down, you can see it's decreasing that green. Now, if I slide it up and you can see it's adjusting the green and the aqua. So we'll just give it a little bit more vibrance. That's it. I just want to increase some of that saturation to really make this image pop without going 
overboard. Now, what I'm going to do is I just want to give a bit of warmth to these rocks down the bottom here. So I select right down the bottom here to this browny area and there, that looks so much better. That's it. I don't want to overdo it. Now we have to balance it out and use the luminance slider. So the luminance gives the intensity of the color. If you desaturate a color, you also have to go into the luminance and increase the luminance just so that the color doesn't look flat. So we click the little toggle again. Now, if I do it again, now watch what happens if I slide down on the green. It's darkening the green, and if I slide it up, it's actually increasing the brightness of that green. And I'll do the same here to the orangey yellow down here. If I increase it, you can see it's actually sort of washed the rock away. So I'm going to decrease it. Now that looks really good, but I can see that it's actually affected the green as well. So I'm going to bring the greens back just manually there. Now I can see in the background here, my shadows are quite dark. So we come back up to the basic panel here and we'll just slide the, the shadows up a little bit. Now this is about as much editing that I want to do on this. So now I have to copy all my edited settings across to the other three images. I come down here to the first image, it's selected. I hold the shift key and select the last image. The four images have been selected now. And this is how I'm going to synchronize all the editing that I did on the first image across to the other three. So I right click with the mouse button on any of these images. I come up to develop settings and I click sync settings. This dialog box pops up and it asks me which settings do I want synchronized. So you can see there's treatment and profile, white balance, basic tones. I didn't touch the tone curve. These are the last ones that I did. I didn't transform the image at all. I used lens correction and that's it. I didn't crop the image. So these are all the ones that I used. Now I just click synchronize. So now they're all synchronized. So now I have to go into Photoshop to stack my four images. So again, I just come down here to the thumbnails, right click on it, click on edit in, and we want to go down here to open has layers in Photoshop. You don't just want to say edit in Adobe Photoshop. It has to be open has layers. Now, depending on the speed of your computer, depending how quick all these layers are actually opened in Photoshop. My computer isn't the quickest, so it just takes a bit of time. You can see it's just reading each image. So now all our images are open in Adobe Photoshop. So we select all the images. We come up to edit and we select auto align layers. Even though I took these images on a tripod, the chance of movement is still there, slightly there because I was touching the camera. For safety's sake, it's best to click on auto align layers before we blend the images. So we click auto align layers and it pops up here and we just want auto. We don't want perspective or anything like that. We just want to do an auto align. We click OK. So what it was quickly looking for is major structural areas in the photo. So the rocks, the palm trees and all that. It won't look at the water, just major parts of your photo. That's it. It's auto aligned the images. And you can see right down here on the bottom right, there's just a little bit of white there. So it shows that one or two of the images were slightly off alignment, but it's merged them all correctly. Now we go back up to edit and we select auto blend layers. Now this pop-up screen pops up and we have two ways of auto blending layers. One is a panorama and one is stacked images. We want stacked images. And underneath here it says tick box, seamless tones and curves, and another one, content aware fill the transparent areas. We leave this one unticked. You have to make sure that seamless tones and curves is selected. And the second one here is unselected. We click OK. Now it's just quickly going to blend our four images. That's it. Perfect. Now we come up to layer and we say flatten image. And if we zoom in, I'll do this slowly because the computer's a little bit slow, especially because I'm screen recording this. And look, we can see the tree fronds are nicely in focus. Look at these rocks here, beautifully focused. 
but if I go to the background these trees here they're out of focus and that's what I wanted and if we scroll down towards the front here in the middle of the image look at this rock here nicely focused keep going down the bottom this one here also is focused and we come all the way down here and look at that so this is right at my feet because the camera was tilted down so the camera was actually tilted like this so it was just very close to the tripod leg and you can see all the foreground here is nicely focused even though I shot this image at f11 there is no way of getting front to back focus even at f16 I wouldn't get that front to back focus this is why focus stacking is so good for a scene like this if you just want to select one area of your image and soften the rest then all you need is one photo but sometimes focus stacking especially if you want your foreground your midground and your background in focus this is the only way and you can see now when it's actually stacked them all there's a bit of white around the image but that's okay when we go back into adobe lightroom we will crop the image to what we want so i'm happy with this all i come up here to do is just click the x box so it's going to close the image but it's going to save it at the same time so we close it and it pops up do you want to save the changes we say yes so it saved the image so this is our final image now i will crop it i will leave it on original because it's six by four and i'll just bring it in a little bit just to get rid of the white areas so that's it that's all i need to do i quite like this image i've done all the editing i'm very happy with this image when I finish images like this what I do if you follow me on Facebook or other social media you'll see that all of my images have a small border around and I used the Nick plugins to create a border you can do these in Photoshop but I find that the Nick plugins have borders and I've made custom borders for my landscapes Astro and wildlife images that would be the only thing that I would do now to publish my image is I would add a border and this is the final image now with the border you can see how nicely it looks now if you found value in this video tutorial give it a thumbs up I'd appreciate if you subscribe to my YouTube channel stay safe enjoy your photography and I'll see you next time